go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for being here. I want to welcome you to the Healing Power of Plant Foods cooking class. Super excited you're here, and I welcome, want to welcome those who are at home watching on, I guess it's YouTube. It's great to have you here, and I just want to let you know if you are wanting the recipes from this class tonight, you can just email me at healthforlifecooking at gmail.com, and the number four, the health four, is a number four. So, and I will send those out to you. All righty, well, um, you guys have all been with me, so that's a, that's a good thing, but I'll still, um, just, you know, just talk about to the people's home, especially about why I'm here and um, the enthusiasm I have about plant foods and how drastically they can improve your health. I was eating a standard American diet for, you know, the first part of my life. <laughs> and um, and I, I was noticing around me um, the people that I interacted with and people that I saw you know, in hospitals and things, and I, and I saw the, the health problems that they were going through. My family, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, they all had the whole gamut of that, and I watched that over the years as I was growing up. And I decided many, many years ago that I wanted to decrease that risk for myself. I knew that there was something that I could do that would greatly decrease my risk of these diseases, as well as help to achieve and maintain my ideal weight, which is which was a problem for me in my younger years. I was on this constant roller coaster of dieting and exercising like a mad woman to keep off the weight because I love to eat. And it just seemed like it was a never ending battle and trying diet after diet after diet. And then finally I stumbled onto some books and changed to a whole food plant-based diet pretty much overnight. And I went from a very healthy standard American diet of you know, whole wheat bread and low fat, chicken and fish and uh, turkey and you know I, I ate vegetables and and but I and I low fat dairy <laughs> um, but in that week I, I pretty much changed overnight and within a week I felt so much better my my energy just skyrocketed and I went from you know I went pretty much exclusively plant foods um, at that time and I just was amazed at the results and how much better I felt and the weight I no longer battled my weight which was so Refreshing because I that was such a battle for me and I watched I, I saw women in their 40s and 50s and 60s and even my grandma at the time She was probably in her 70s. She was still talking about wanting to lose some weight and I thought oh my gosh I hate the whole mental madness of the you know the dieting thing and I don't want to be doing this my whole life I've got better things to do with my with my thoughts my mind and this took it all away pretty much you can I mean this is this eating this way eating lots of plant foods the more you eat the better is about abundance it's not about starvation or deprivation. It's about abundance and being totally filled and very happy with it, and especially how you feel. And when you start feeling really, really good, you don't even, you know, you're more motivated to make even more changes, which gives you even better results. So that's why I'm here tonight. I'm passionate about teaching other people. We have a lot of, a lot of sickness in the world. And, you know, right now as we're kind of dealing with the virus, this is one thing that is the most important thing, most important more important than wearing a mask <laughs> is to feed your body right. Build your immune system from the inside and it will protect you from the things that are coming in on the outside. The more plants, the more your immune system is, is on fire and we want that. So, um, and, and it kind of goes back mainly, those, those powers mainly come from vegetables, vegetables and fruits especially. Grandma was right, mom was right, eat your vegetables. But we need to be eating a lot more of them. And that's kind of my focus in my classes, is making your, your foods, your meals, a vegetable-based diet. And people think, oh, I don't like vegetables. You gotta know how to cook them and to put them in, dish, to di put them in dishes to make, to make it good. And tonight, um, for those of you here that were here last month, I think that's mostly all of you, um, I did a vegetable bean burrito. And in that burrito, we had broccoli and cauliflower and carrots, along with some pinto beans. And I had uh, lots of great compliments about that and how much they liked it. In fact, I think some of you went home and made it, <laughs> which is great. And tonight, we're gonna use those same vegetables and make a completely different dish. And I kinda wanted to do that just to show you, you know, you can turn a vegetable into any type of dish you want. You can do Mexican, you know, American style, Italian, which is kinda what we're doing, kind of an Italian flair tonight. Um, so the main dish that we're doing is a millet primavera, and then we're doing something that's not so Italian, a spring asparagus soup. That's just a great um, soup for this time of year. It's real light, and asparagus is in season. It's delicious. It's good for you. And we're going to do a, a spinach salad with an orange vinaigrette and raspberry or triple berry pie for dessert. 
And that's what we're going to start off with because I want to let it set up a little bit while I do the rest of the recipes and that way it's set up some while you guys or while we're finishing up the class. So we'll jump over here to the food processor and get my pan and I'm doing a pie so to speak but to serve it um, to serve it it's a little bit easier to cut it in a square dish when I'm serving a few more than just your regular and plus this pie is a little bit easier when it's square cuts anyway it does set up fairly well but okay so we're gonna start off with a crust and it's going to be a nut based crust and we're gonna be using um, we're gonna be using a cup of raw almonds and I've got my, my food processor here fitted with the, what they call an S blade. It looks like an S. And then I'm going to put in half, of, half a cup of pecans. And you can use some walnuts in this. What you want to have is a dry nut with a, with a more um, oily nut. So almonds are a little bit more, more dry. Pecans or walnuts are a little more oily. And you could, you could use all almonds, but you wouldn't want to use all pecans because it would get too too oily. It's too oily and it would, it would get too mushy. I mean, you could use it, but it would be a little bit harder to work with. And I'll show you what I mean when we put it in our pan. But um, the almonds work really great for this. You've seen recipes probably with almond flour. And we're just basically making almond flour in our food processor. Almonds, whole almonds are much cheaper than buying almond flour. So I just make my own. So we'll go ahead and add a half cup of pecans. And these are raw again. And then we're going to add some dates, um, about 10, this is about a half a cup or 10 of the small dates. And these are pitted. I buy them pitted, but you still want to give them a little squeeze and make sure that the pit's not out because it's no fun to have to dig a pit out of that when, uh, once you get it blending up. So we'll go ahead and put those in there. And if you want to use the medjools, they're a larger date, about twice the size of those. So you would, uh, you would cut, you know, you cut the amount in half. So just like five medjools. And they're more, uh, bigger, plumper, a lot softer, actually. And probably would probably be grind up a little bit easier. I buy these because they're a little bit cheaper. OK, then we're going to add some vanilla. About a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's it. We're going to go ahead and grind this up. So what, you're, what you want to happen with this is for it to get sticky. And how you can tell is you just grab a bunch of the crumb and you can see it's real crumbly still. So we want to keep grinding that up. Now if we were to use all pecans, it would already be kind of like pecan butter almost. I mean it, it grinds up really fast. You'd have some pieces still in there and then you'd have some that's too sticky. So that's why I like to use the almonds. And if for some reason it didn't, it didn't start to stick together, and it should, but I, I don't know if you had a food processor that wasn't a real heavy duty one, it may not grind it down fine enough, but I, I'm pretty sure it would. But if for some reason it didn't get sticky for you, um, even if you were to use all almonds, you might have this issue, it doesn't get sticky enough. So you can add just a tiny little bit of water, like an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon, not, you don't want very much, because you, again, you don't want it to get too sticky. Go ahead and test that. Still a little bit crumbly, so we'll let that go a little bit longer. What I love to do at Christmas time is to add some cocoa powder to this, maybe some more dates. Actually, it'd be half dates, half nuts. Add some cocoa powder, add some coconut, add some. Um, you know, instead of the cocoa powder, add maybe some dried apple or dried cranberries, and I make truffles. Roll them in balls and freeze them or not freeze them and just eat them like candy. They're so good. I've done a lemon truffle, truffle before, same, same type of thing. Okay, this is getting, that is getting 
sticky, almost a little too sticky. This is kind of like a graham cracker crust. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this so it's not in my way. And what we're going to do with some of this is just take out about a quarter of a cup and put it off to the side because we're going to top the pie with this. And then we're going to dump the rest of it in our pan. And just spread it around the bottom. It's the easiest pie crust you'll ever make. Much better than grandma's, you know, white flour, lard, or whatever it was, Crisco, that you had to roll out. And, and there's enough of this that you can push it up on the side. So if you had a round pie pan, you could push it up on the side and kind of do that like a regular pie. And then just press it down once you kind of got it all distributed as even as you can. All right, and that's it for our, cry, for our pie crust. Super, super easy, really good. And I'm just going to set that off to the side, and then we'll do the, the fruit part of our pie. All right, so what I've got here is about six cups of frozen berries. And you could use fresh, but I like to use the frozen because it kind of gives it a more um, cooked texture, kind of like a real pie, um, but the, the fresh, fresh berries would be great. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain off some of the liquid, as much of the liquid as I can. And if you don't have a strong blender like a Vitamix or a Blendtec that would, that's going to blend your dates down easily, because I'm going to put dates in, in this, what you could do is soak your dates in the juice from the berries for a few hours, and that's going to soften those dates right up because the dates are kind of hard. Okay, and then we're gonna put in our dates and I've got about 20 of those same small Diglett Nor pitted dates. They seem to be a little bit more fibery. They seem to set the pie up a little bit better than like a Diglett date, I mean uh, a Medjool, those big plump ones. They're less, I think there's less fiber in them and that's what helps the pie to set up. So I like to use these instead of those. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm just going to measure with this little cup here. I'm just going to put about a cup of berries in here with the juice. And then we're going to give this a blend. Oh, let's see, we want to put some vanilla in here as well. About a half a teaspoon. And what's going to happen, the, the seeds from the, okay, we've got the dates in here that's going to help it thicken, and we've also got seeds in the blackberries and the raspberries, and those seeds, when you grind them down, that's going to help the thickening effect as well, because seeds have fiber in them. Okay, we'll go ahead and blend those up. So this is your, your glaze, like when you make a, a regular pie. This is going to be your glaze, like you have for regular pies. But your sugar is your dates and your berries. By the way, your berries are your highest nutrient, highest nutrient fruit, the most nutritious fruit. It's low calorie and high nutrient. And that's what we like to focus on when we're eating plant foods is the nutritional value 
And when you eat high, nu high nutrient foods, you're automatically getting low calorie foods. Let's see some things about blueberries. Oh, high in antioxidants. <clears throat> and, you know, we hear the word antioxidant, but we really, do we know what antioxidants are and what they do? Well, we know that antioxidants are in lemon, and when you pour lemon juice over an apple, it keeps it from turning brown, and that browning is oxidation. And that happens to our body. Scientists believe that we get like 10,000 oxidative hits a day, and that comes from you know, just our environment, the things that we breathe in, the things that we eat, the things that we put on our body, in our body, um, you know, if we're around chemicals, the, that those things damage our, damage our cells, even our thoughts, even the bad thoughts create oxidation. Exercise cre creates oxidation. So we need to eat a lot of antioxidants. Berries are one of your best antioxidant rich foods. They, berries have been shown to help uh, reduce age-related mental decline. Good, good for the brain. They have um, brain-accessing polyphenol antioxidants that help with that. Uh, three or more weekly servings of blueberries and strawberries showed to have 34% less risk of heart attack. What a delicious way to reduce your risk of heart disease. Eating berries, they Im improve your blood pressure. We're gonna go ahead and pour this into our crust. There was a study done with um, people with esophageal cancer, and they gave the participants two ounces of freeze-dried strawberries that was equal to a, about a pound of strawberries a day. And there was a 80%, oh, 80 of, the per, of the participants had a, reduce, a reduction in their cancer, in the cancer cells that they had in them. I don't know what the percentage, let's see. Oh, it, it says half the, half the subjects healed from the cancer, from those, that pound of strawberries. So those are some great anti-cancer benefits. All right, I cut up the strawberries and I missed one. So there's kind of a big chunk of strawberry in there. Yeah, the strawberries were quite big, so I cut them in half and then I cut them again. So we'll just do that to that one. Oops. Okay, like I said, this is gonna set up, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and that'll help. And it sets up a lot overnight. So if you were to put this in the refrigerator in the morning, it would be pretty well set up. So what I'm gonna do with this reserved nut crumble is just sprinkle that over the top. I don't know about you guys, but berry pie is like one of my favorites ever since I was a kid. That was always my favorite. We always had a, some type of a berry, raspberry, boysenberry. Seems like there was another one that was a little bit kind of different. Maybe it was a combination berry. And not only does it taste great, but it looks great as well. Which is you know, half the battle, making it look good. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this in the refrigerator. And I don't know about you guys, but I like warm berry pie with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> and I'll just tell you real quick, uh, maybe I should, I should have made it tonight. Um, I'll do that in the, well, we don't have classes in the summer. I'll do it in my community education classes in the summer. You can come to those. But I make a vanilla ice cream with a cup of cashews, a cup of dates, four to five cups of water, and about a tablespoon of vanilla. Blend that up in your blender, pour it in your ice cream freezer, and it freezes up to a nice cream. So, so good. Ever since I learned that recipe, I haven't had ice cream since. I know that's really hard to believe. <laughs> cup of cashews, a cup of dates, about a tablespoon of vanilla, and four to five cups of water and you just blend that up. I soak everything first, soak the cashews, soak the dates like overnight, blend that up to it makes a nice cream. In fact, you can do, go less water and make a thick cream to pour over fruit like, a, like peaches and cream, so good. 
or a fruit salad with the cream that has a cream dressing, just make it a, a heavier cream. But with the ice cream, you do about four to five cups of water. And you could go even a little bit more. The more water, of course, you're gonna thin it down and make it less rich. So that's just a great, great substitute for ice cream. That was ice, uh, ice cream was the last dairy product to go in my diet. Like, cause I was trying to get dairy out and I, but I would still have a little ice cream cause that was my favorite dessert. And uh, once I learned how to make that, I didn't need to have it anymore. Okay, we're gonna go back over here to our burner, or come over here to our burner, we haven't been here yet, and go ahead and start the Millet Primavera. And I'm gonna get my burner hot here and just go wash my blender for a second. I'm gonna need that a little bit later. Okay, we're gonna start off our millet primavera with an onion, like I do most everything I cook. I start off with an onion. And I'm just using a yellow onion tonight. You can use any kind of onion you want. The red onions are your highest antioxidant onion, actually, and I do like to use a lot of those during the summer in salads. That's my favorite onion for salads, and occasionally I'll use them to cook with. But those onions, they are packed with organosulfur compounds, and we experience them when we cut this onion open. You don't even know they're there until you cut it open, and then all of a sudden the floodgates open, right? Unless you got a chopper, and then you don't notice them quite as much. But as soon as you cut that open, those organosulfur compounds go into effect. The more you chop, the more they come together and create compounds that are anti-cancer. We want to get onions in every day. Large European study involving 10 countries showed that those who ate the most onions had the least cancers, and they were that was dose dependent. So the more, the more the better. We'll just add our onion to our pan. Now I don't have any oil in my pan. I never use oil in my cooking at all. Oil is 120 calories of pure 100% fat. It's the highest calorie, lowest nutrient food that we consume, and it increases risk of heart disease. And it also causes weight gain. I mean, we're eating, when we're eating free oils, is what they're called, we're eating 100% fat. And that fat is not bound to the original food fibers. So olive oil is not bound to the fiber in oils, in olives. And same with almond oil or you know, vegetable oil. When you're eating oils from a whole food that's still intact in that whole food, like those almonds, those, fi those fats are bound to the fibers. And when we eat that food, it takes hours and hours for everything in that food to be processed in your body and those fats are not stored. They know just what to do, they do what they need to do and then the excess is, is dumped out into the toilet. <laughs> but those free oils, they go right into your bloodstream, they clog up your arteries, even olive oil, even coconut oil. And I encourage you to go on my website, healthforlifecooking.com and I've got four videos on there from some of the leading doctors they talk about why no oil. And um, it's not a healthy food. Good way to gain some weight is to eat some oil. <laughs> Good way to clog your arteries is to eat some oil. It slows blood flow in, in studies where they um, put the, the, the cuff on, on your arm and took your blood pressure. After an, a meal full of olive oil, it slowed blood flow 40%. So. And then it lasted about four hours, that slowing of the blood flow lasted about four hours. And then bam, you go eat again. And then what happens? Slows down your blood flow again. I don't want slow blood. Our blood is the highway, to, highway of nutrients throughout our body. It takes all the nutrients where they need to go. And we want that blood flow going nice and smooth through our arteries. And our arteries can be like Teflon if we treat them right. Nice and slick, blood flows through really easily. 
And, that, and the reason that does that is because the, the cells that line your arteries are called endothelial cells. And I'm just chopping up some, some garlic. I'm putting three cloves of garlic in this. Uh, they're called endothelial cells, and those cells produce a gas called nitric oxide. That nitric oxide makes your arteries like Teflon. It's the most powerful vasodilator, meaning your, your vascular, your arteries expand. When you go out for a run, when you're in the gym lifting weights, when you're running up a flight of stairs, you, and you've seen it in athletes that their, their blood vessels are popping out, that's because their blood ve vessels are expanding. And the reason they are, and to make them sure that they expand correctly, we gotta keep them nice and flexible. And that's what nitric oxide does. I need a little bit of water. Let's see. And nitric oxide is produced in those endothelial cells. And a good way to shut down that nitric oxide production is to put oil in your blood vessels. That shuts down that nitric oxide production. Makes your blood vessels sticky. All right, so we, now I just put a little bit, once the, once the onions started to caramelize, you can see the browning on the bottom of my pan. I put in that water and that kind of lifts up that browning. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in the garlic. That's three cloves of garlic, finely chopped. Garlic is another one of the allium vegetables. It's in the onion family where it's got those anti-cancer properties and they also decrease risk of heart disease. Both onions and garlic and garlic do decrease inflammation throughout the entire body. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add some carrots. And I'm not using my chopper tonight for these. I am gonna use them for the mushrooms. I'm just gonna slice these. I wanna keep, like the burritos I did last week, I used it all on the chopper and it chopped it down nice and fine to where you hardly even knew the vegetables were in the burrito. But tonight it's more of a, kind of an Italian stir fry, I guess. Um, and I wanna use the vegetables a little bit more chunky, like in florets. So, but the carrots, um, I got some of these sliced already. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my carrot and I'm gonna slice it lengthwise. And you can just cut them in rounds if you want. But you know what happens when you're cutting a carrot on the cutting board and you're cutting them in rounds? They go rolling off onto the floor. At least they do for me. <laughs> so I like to slice them lengthwise and then slice them. And they kind of stay put a little bit easier. Carrots are one of those foods that you can cook and cook and cook and cook. The more you cook it, the more nutrients you're gonna get out of it. So you're, because you're softening the fibers of the plants when you've got such a tough, uh, tough vegetable. It's great to eat raw carrots. You're getting nutrients out of them, but it's better to eat them cooked. You're softening the fibers and making those micronutrients that we need so badly much more bioavailable. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. We've got that on medium high. I like to cook quick. And carrots were one of those foods that showed um, to increase in nutrients, at not only the absorption, but it actually increases in nutrients the more you cook it. Uh, Dr. Michael Greger on his website, nutritionfacts.org, he does it, puts out a video every other day about the latest research on whatever topic you want to know. He's been doing it for years, and there's thousands, literally thousands of videos on his site. And one of them, he talks about the fi five different ways of cooking, steaming, sauteing, stir-frying, microwave, pressure seal, boiling, that's six. I don't know, maybe they didn't do all of them, but there were, there were five ways. One of them was boiling, and the rest of them were all the others, uh, microwaving and steaming and sauteing. And the nutrient loss was very similar in all of them, except that for the ones that were boiling. So, um, oh, this was off on a different topic. But anyway, the ones that were boiling, all the nutrients were in the water. So a good way to eat your food is in a soup. But they, um, they showed that the nutrient loss was only, um, was only like 14%. So all you have to do is just eat a little bit more of the food. But um, I was going there with, I was going somewhere when I first started with that. The carrots, oh, carrots. Carrots, beets, artichokes, um, celery was another one that the more you cook it, the more nutrients you get out of it. So. You don't need to worry about cooking carrots too much. And I'm just gonna cook them. I like to cook them first, a little bit ahead of time. And while these are cooking, 
I kind of chop, I, I chop as I, I mean, I cook as I chop. So I chop my, I do my onion, my garlic, and then I do my carrots, get them in the pan, and then while the carrots are cooking, I go over and I work on my broccoli and cauliflower and get them all cooked, cut down. And what I've done is just taken the, made them into small florets. Um, the cauliflower, I take the large floret, cut it in half, and then cut that each half in like thirds. So cauliflower is a little weird to cut. Do you ever find yourself like wanting to get a little bit too obsessive about making florets? And it's hard with the cauliflower. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add the cauliflower, and that's three cups of that. There are a couple pieces I want to cut down just a little bit more. And cauliflower is a cruciferous vegetable along with your broccoli, which we're going to add next. And we want to get lots of cruciferous vegetables in our diet because they have the most powerful effect against cancer. So we got three cups of, of broccoli. Studies show that women who eat one serving of cruciferous vegetables a day, which is about a cup, cut the risk of breast cancer in half. Other studies show that men who eat them three times a week, cruciferous vegetables, have a 64% less risk of, 34% less risk of prostate cancer. That's three times a week, 34% less risk. So what if, what if they were eating them every day? Much, much greater effect. And that's broccoli, kale, collards, arugula, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all your cabbages, um, beet, no, not beet greens, radish green, radishes, basically, turnips. By the way, did you know that you can eat radish greens? We grew them last year, grew radishes. We do it every year, and I always throw the greens in the, in the trash, and I thought, I wonder how these would be cooked. They're not very good raw. So I cooked them, and they are so good. So... You can use, yeah, I hate throwing, throwing stuff away. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water to that and put the lid on and just let that cook. We don't want too much water in that. Okay, and then we'll jump over here to our, our soup our um, asparagus soup, and I am just going to put everything right in. Let's see, where's our onion? There's our onion. I'll go ahead and chop up this onion. We're going to use a yellow onion again. And we're going to blend this soup, so I'm, so I'm not too concerned about getting the slices of the onion too small. All right, so we've got onion in there. And then we're going to go with about a cup of white button mushrooms. And these are just sliced. Mushrooms are another one of those anti-cancer foods. In fact, I, I've been hearing on the radio about some type of a cancer drug, and it talks about aromatase inhibitors. You can take aromatase inhibitors in drug form. Un, uh, mushrooms have aromatase inhibitors. They keep estrogen levels low. Women out of China, one study showed that women who ate um, one button mushroom a day had 64% less risk of breast cancer, and when they combined that with green tea, which they drink a lot of over there, bumped it up to 89%. So we want to get mushrooms in every, as much as we can. This is a, this is a cup. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my, um, my asparagus, and what I've done, so you want a pound of, a, a pound of asparagus, and then you snip off the ends. I actually just cut off the ends, because I find most of the ends are actually not, not too, too tough, um, but I just cut about an inch off. And then, so you want a pound, and then you cut off the ends. So we're not talking a pound after you cut, we're talking a pound before you cut. Not that it would really make that much difference, probably. But I'm just going to go ahead and add that to my pan. Whoops. And then we want, how much water do we want? We want two and a half cups of water. Okay. 
And I like to start off with less water because you can always add. So we're just going to put everything right in there. And I dropped some. And let that come to a boil and then we'll just let that turn that down. All right. Back to our vegetables. Now with the burrito, I wanted the vegetables to be soft. I didn't want crisp tender like you would do in a stir fry. I wanted them nice and soft so it blended nicely with that white cream and with the, with the beans that were in it. And again, if, for those that, at home that maybe missed that class, it was a Mexican food class, I can send you those recipes if you want to contact me at that email address. Um, but these, these vegetables, we could go a little bit more crisp tender. I still like them a little bit on the soft side, though. But you can do it. Just cook them however you like, however <coughs> much you want to cook them. I'm going to go ahead and slice our or chop our mushrooms up. We're going to add those to this as well. So some more things about uh, mushrooms. They stimulate immune function. Okay, we want to we wanna stimulate our immune systems right now, right? We're, you know, trying to keep ourselves healthy and well and virus free and we want to boost that immune system. That's going to protect you in so many different ways. Um, they have 22 proteins that lower cholesterol and blood pressure at the same time. They're a great way to feed your gut. Mushrooms are, um, they create a very good gastrointestinal environment with good bacteria. They reduce uh, vascular inflammation and re re increase elasticity in your, in your arteries. Let's see, they, uh, pr again, function like probiotics. So, um, you know, probiotics could be a good thing to eat or to, to take when you are, you know, after you've taken an antibiotic or something, but the best things, the best probiotics are plant foods. Every, every plant, has a different, their own unique microbiome. And I don't know if you guys know what your microbiome is, but it's your bacteria in and on your body, throughout your body, not just in your gastrointestinal tract. You've got a microbiome, those bacteria all over your body. And you want a good, a good balance of the good and the bad. We're hearing more and more talk about a healthy microbiome and probiotics and all that stuff. But probiotics come from plant foods. And we want prebiotics as well. And prebiotics also come from plant foods. Um, a famous, well, I don't know how famous he is, but a good gastroenterologist that I like to listen to, Will Bolsawicz. He wrote the book Fiber Fueled. If you want a good book to read, that's an excellent book to read. All about your gut health. Um, he says, he and many others that I've heard since, since hearing him and, and reading his book, to get at least 30 plant foods a day for, for a good gut, you know, microbiome, good probiotics, and then just work up from there. If you can get 30 plant foods, did I say a day? I meant a week, 30 plant foods a week. You're like, a day? Oh my gosh, I can't eat that much food. <laughs> um, yeah, 30, for 30 plant foods a week, and then work up from there. I'm, I'm shooting for more than that. I'm just a, it's, it's hard to get 30. I mean, I eat a lot of plant foods, and it's, it's hard to get 30. <laughs> you got to really think about it. But it kind of just makes you add, you know, you just end up adding more stuff. Like, like I never added parsley to my salad, and I thought one day, I could add some parsley or cilantro to my salad. So just adding more of those leafy greens, more vegetables. All right, then we're going to add some peas. We've got, actually, we're going to add our seasonings. We're going to add a tablespoon of basil and about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. You could use fresh basil, of course, which is better because that's going to, that's going to count as one of those plant foods. Dried herbs don't count. So, but when I cook, I tend to use dry herbs. And when I do like a raw salad or something, I'll use fresh herbs. Smelling so good. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and add some peas. And this is two cups of frozen peas. 
And peas fit into the, the legume category. I talk about in my other classes, I talk about um, beans and the importance of eating beans every day. But peas are right up there with, they're in that same category, in the legume category. We want to get those in every day. And like I was talking, I think before I started class, somebody was asking me about, um, about the gas problem with beans. You want to start out very small. If you're not used to eating a lot of beans, you want to start out uh, low and slow is what they say. So a low amount and just go slow at it. Maybe once a day in your salad or a little bit in your soup or whatever and just kind of work up to it. Because those beans are building your, building your gut and even the peas as well. In fact, they have resistant starch. Beans in particular have resistant starch that re resists regular digestion. It goes back down into the large intestine, feeds your gut bacteria, and promotes butyrate, which is a fatty acid, which is what's so good about building your gut. Well, if you go to the gym and work out really hard, you're going to get sore. And then if you start eating beans every day, and you're eating a cup every day, and you haven't eaten them your whole life, you're going to be sore. <laughs> so you want to start out low and slow. So our soup stuff is boiling, so we're just going to turn that down. Okay. Yes? Uh, someone told me that uh, you need 30% uh, protein uh, of your calorie intake, or from protein, 30%. Can you get that with vegetables like uh, asparagus and broccoli and black beans and things like that? You can, but you don't want 30% protein in your diet, especially 30% animal protein. Studies show, the China study, if you want another good book to read, read the China study. Studies out of China show that, that when animal protein increased above 10%, um, it started, you started growing cancer. So you, and they could literally turn on and turn off tumor growth by the level of protein, animal protein in the diet. So you want to keep it below 10%. You can, get t you can get plenty from vegetables, yes. There is protein in every, in every food. Every plant food, there's protein in it. In fact, I've got a handout up there. Um, it shows the protein percentage of, of every food. You know, greens are super high between 40 and 50% on most greens. Um, peas and beans, of course, are high, like around, I think they're like 25, 30%. Uh, even fruit. Broccoli is like 29. Yeah, yeah. Um, even fruit is up in, you know, it's in the single digits, but there's protein in it. So, yeah, you have no, no risk. There is, there is, I don't know any, I mean, you probably couldn't find a doctor that, that has ever heard of a protein deficiency disease, um, except for maybe in other countries that aren't getting enough food. If you're getting enough calories, even if they're junk food calories, you're getting enough protein. So, but you want to make sure they're good quality protein. <laughs> and instead of, you know, I mean, I don't tell people whether or not to eat animal foods. That's kind of a choice. That's a personal choice, but I encourage people to get it down as low as you can. When you're eating animal foods, you're getting kind of processed greens and the most important foods. You're getting it in a processed form. So it's, and it doesn't have the high antioxidants and the cancer protective properties of, of the plant foods. Um, animal foods haven't been shown, never been shown to re reverse disease. Plant foods have. So the more the better. Okay, so these are getting nice and tender. Does somebody else have a question? I'm hearing kind of an echo in my ear, so I'm like thinking it's somebody asking. Um, I'm going to go ahead and taste one of these carrots to see if it's tender enough, because we want these nice and tender. That's tasting pretty good. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and add some tomatoes. Let's see, make sure I've got everything two cans of diced tomatoes. And these are, I believe, let's see, they are no salt. But I do add salt. I like to, I like to add my own, though. That way I can kind of control the amount. And then this is millet primavera, so I'm going to add some millet. And I already have this cooked up. You guys familiar with millet? Millet is one of the main ingredients in bird seed. <laughs> so if anybody asks, you can say, I, I eat bird food. You know, instead of rabbit food, we eat bird food. No, this is, um, this is a really great high protein grain. It's super, super good. I love the flavor of it. It's kind of like quinoa, but it's a little bit heartier. And I really like it um, as 
not, I don't want to say a substitute for pasta because there's really nothing, anything, nothing wrong with pasta. But if you're a little bit um, obsessive about, I'm kind of a purist and I like eating st pretty much strictly whole foods, I like to use a whole grain rather than pasta. And in this dish, it just works better anyway. I mean, the original recipe that I got this from, they used um, couscous, I think, which is a, I think a pasta, like a little tiny grain pasta. But I like the millet. Really good in Italian style food. So this is, you cook it just like rice. So um, a cup of grain to about two cups of water. It cooks fairly quickly, about 15 minutes. And this is one cup of millet that's been cooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I love to combine grains. I have a, I, I do a millet quinoa combination in my salad pretty much every day. There's, it's a, uh, talking about protein, millet and quinoa both are super high protein grains. And when you combine them like that, you're getting, again, you're getting that, you know, millet has a different uh, bacteria composition than quinoa does then rice does, then wheat does, then oats do. They all have their different microbiome. And the more variety we get, the better. And this is all about, most of it's all about reducing inflammation throughout the body. That's one of the, that's the main, you know, one of the common components of all disease is inflammation. We need to eat an anti-inflammatory diet and whole grains, vegetables, beans, all of that are anti-inflammatory. All right, that is looking so good. And then I like to add, I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn the burner off on that. Because everything's cooked good and it's nice and hot. And I am gonna add some salt to this. And I think I can probably guess. I'm going to go about a teaspoon. And you can always add more if you need to. I'm not too afraid of salt. I try to limit it, but um, I don't. A lot of some of the a lot of the doctors I listen to, they encourage you to completely get it out of your diet, but. I've gotten everything else out of my diet. I'm not sure I want to go, the, go totally salt-free. Although I'm learning to love vinegar with my greens. Like I'll do a greens and grains combination, like greens and like kale and rice or something. And I like to put in some uh, apple cider vinegar in with it. And the vinegar actually increases that nitric oxide effect with your arteries. A little bit of vinegar with your greens. So, okay. And then, don't want to forget, I like to add some pumpkin seeds. I've added, I've added um, pine nuts to this as well. Pine nuts are so expensive though. I just haven't even bought them for years. But I like pumpkin seeds in this. So you can leave these out if you want. But I like to add them for their nutrients. Zinc and iron. Lignans, which are, um, which are lignans. They convert phytoestrogens to um, a more, um, your body uses it better. It's a, a better type of, of estrogen, plant estrogen. Add some nice flavor. Pumpkin seeds, I, I really like this kind of the strong flavor of pumpkin seeds. And adds a little bit of crunch. Okay, that is done. We're going to go ahead and put the lid on that and just keep that warm. And we'll move back over to our soup and check the, check and see if it's, that asparagus is tender. It's hot. Ah, and it's tender. All right. So we're going back over here to our blender. And I should have brought my tall, my tall um, container here, but we might have to do it in batches. Okay, so we've got our, our asparagus, our onion, our mushrooms, and water in here. And we want to add a little bit of, of creaminess to this. And you can totally leave the, the nuts out. But I am going to add um, a quarter cup of cashews to my blender. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of tahini. Do you guys know what tahini is? Isn't that it, tahini is sesame seeds. So it's sesame seed butter, basically. It's like, 
you know, almond butter, peanut butter, but it's made from sesame seeds. Sesame seeds have the highest amount of calcium of all foods, by the way. Um, although sesame seeds with the brown hull, the hull is where all the calcium's at, and tahini is made with white sesame seeds. So, but I just wanted to bring that up, that sesame seeds are a really great source of calcium. Um, so anyway, a tablespoon of tahini. And then we've got onion powder, garlic powder, and I don't have any salt in that yet, but we'll go ahead and add. I am gonna get a little measuring spoon for this salt. In this recipe, you could. The quinoa is, uh, are you familiar with quinoa? Well, I have some. I, I couldn't give you the chemical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he, for those at home, he was asking about swapping just quinoa out for the millet. And quinoa is very light and fluffy. I really like it for salads, like summer salads. Um, it would, I mean, it'd work okay, but I think it would get kind of, it get weighed down by the heavy vegetables. The, bro the broccoli, cauliflower, carrots are all kind of heavy vegetables, and I think it would kind of weigh the quinoa down. It would taste fine and be fine, I'm sure. I just prefer the millet. The millet is a heavier It's a heavier grain. grain. It, then, it, 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 it would compete with those heavier vegetables. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. I got you. No, but, I'm, I'm familiar with the texture. But if, you've, if you don't have millet. It's quite light. It's like snow. Yeah, yeah it's very light. Very light and fluffy. Well, <laughs> but if you if you didn't have millet and you were anxious to try it and just wanted to use quinoa, go for it. I'd be curious to see how because I've never tried quinoa. I have done rice. Rice works nicely, okay. yeah. but I like I still like the millet better. So. So millet has more of the, the texture of. Yeah. Rice. Yeah. Yes, a little bit heavier. Okay, so let's see. We got the salt in there, and I didn't put the lemon juice in that. So we're gonna. I don't want to forget that. Not that it it's fine without it, but. Um, there's my lemon juice. So we want about a tablespoon of lemon juice in our soup. So we'll go ahead and, well, I think I'm going to add that off, actually after I blend it. So we're just going to get these veggies out of the pot and into the blender. By the way, I got this asparagus at Smith's, and they had a lot of it, and it's really tiny, thin stalks, which is what you want to look for in asparagus. The, the thicker they get, the tougher they are. Oh, that's going to be really full. <laughs> Where's my lid? It's not washed. Okay, we're gonna start out that slow. I don't want an explosion. <laughs> Now I just realized I usually blend um, the cashews and the water first to get it creamy and then I keep the soup a little bit of chunk but since I put everything in there I'm going to go ahead and blend it down because we don't want chunks of um, cashews in there and it'll just be a creamy soup. But if you want to have a little chunk just grind down those nuts before you add the vegetables. We'll 
go ahead and add a tablespoon of lemon juice. And a little blend. All right. Super simple soup. Super simple soup. I like it. <laughs> Whoops. Now, if I can just taste this without letting it burn my tongue. think perfect perfect except we want to add that back to our pot all right so there's our soup it's getting a little bit too hot for soup but I think we got we got cool days coming back, don't we? We're a little too early for hot summer. I'm thinking. I don't know. I can eat soup during the summer. You guys eat soup during the summer? Hot soup. I'm a big salad person during the summer. I do. I hardly ever. I mean, I do cook a little bit during the summer, but it's mainly main dish salads. All right. Let's move over to our salad dressing. Okay, so the base of my salad dressing and many salad dressings that I do, if you've come to my classes before, I know you guys have, um, I do salad dressings quite often. And the base of it is often dates, vinegar, and water. And that's what we've got going here tonight, although I've just got vinegar in here right now. So I've got, let's see, I've got a half a cup of dates and that's about 10 to 12 of those same pitted dates. And I've got it soaking in about a half a cup of rice vinegar. And so, you know, when you go buy a, a vinaigrette type dressing at the grocery store, you look on the label. I hope you always read labels. Look on the label, you're going to see sugar, and you're going to see um, some kind of oil, and you're going to see also vinegar. And so I've got this combination right here. I've got the sugar from the dates and then the vinegar. So you don't need to buy vinegar that's got sugar in it because we're going we're gonna to put the sugar in it. And then we're going to put some fats in it as well, some oils that are from whole foods, which are bound to those fibers, so they're not going to do bad things in your body. So we've got about a tablespoon. Let's see, what do we got here? We got two tablespoons of cashews. Cashews make a really nice cream of anything, like I was telling you about the ice cream. And then we're going to add some orange, just one orange. And we're using the whole orange. We don't want to use juice. We want to use the whole orange so we're getting the fibers and everything, which is going to help to thicken. We don't have to, we don't have to cook this dressing. Any of my dressings, I don't cook them ever. A lot of times you have to cook to make them thick because you're using cornstarch, but when you're using whole plant foods, you don't have to cook. You just, the fibers just thicken already. So I'm going to go ahead and blend this. Let's see, I think we need to add, we do. We need to add about a half a cup of water. Let's see, yep, that's half a cup of water. And if you find this is a little bit too vinegary for you, what you do is you change the ratio of water to vinegar. So I've got a half a cup of water, half a cup of vinegar. Just change that less vinegar, more water, more vinegar, less water, whatever you like. That orange is getting, <laughs> just getting tossed around in there. There we go. Okay, and that's it for our dressing. 
We're going to go ahead and just put that back in this jar. And that's going to go on a spinach salad. And I'm going to let you guys just dish that up yourselves. And the trick to making this really tasty is a little bit of spinach, some orange, some walnuts, and then the dressing. And you get a little bit of all of that in every bite. <laughs> Except we got to get some little bit of red onion in there. I'll just cut that up as you guys come up. Because um, I know we got to get somebody out to a dance class tonight. <laughs> so we've got our millet primavera right there. And you know what? I forgot the lemon juice. I'm just going to put a couple tablespoons of lemon juice in here. And that's just going to add a nice little twang of flavor. Just going to mix that in. Sorry to the camera people. I'm kind of the wrong way here. Just want to stir that in. Good. And I'll get a bigger spoon for that. And then we've got our soup. there and we'll pull that pie out too thought maybe I'll just slice that up okay if you guys want to come up and so grab you you're gonna have to invite the neighbors you say <laughs> Let's see, there we go. So for those at home, are we still on? I guess we are, for those at home. Um, I hope you can be with us next time. Again, if you want some recipes, health for life cooking at gmail.com, I'll go ahead and send those to you. And hopefully we will see you here next time. So glad to have you with us. <laughs>